It had been no longer than a year since the ordeal at Chalmersmith Manor had concluded until Moriarty returned. For once, our story does not begin with Sherlock Holmes himself. It begins at my own home very early on a Monday morning, with my heavily pregnant wife answering the door to a very desperate woman. Oh, goodness. Who could be calling at this hour? Cherry! What on earth are you doing here so early in the morning? Oh, Mary, thank you for answering. I need your help. I don't understand. What's happened? Come in, it's pouring. Is John here? He's a doctor. He could help. Well, yes, but what is the matter? I can't turn to anyone else. The authorities, they won't... Is it about Daryl again? Yes, I don't know what to do. Mary, what's the matter? Daryl. Your husband. He's gone missing. I'm really worried. Oh. He has an addiction, John. <sighs> Opium? Why, uh, yes. How did you know? Lots of cases building up. There's a friend of mine. He has history. Perhaps you should call to Mr. Holmes, John. I can deal with this. No. Sherlock is heavily distracted, and this will not help. Now, Jerry, do you have any idea of where your husband might be? He usually hangs out around the East End. Then he must travel there. Mary, look after the house. I will return. I'm coming with you, Biff. Nonsense, Mary. You are pregnant. We're twins, no less. All of us left together by motor car to search for Daryl, much to my dismay. Daryl was a high taker. He was always ending up in a den somewhere on opium. I heard his addiction has gotten worse in the last year. Sadly, I have been away most days and unable to assist. Cherry led us through the East End, into Bethnal Green. We found ourselves in the lower class areas of the borough. You've seen this den before? No. Well, there should be a den just up here. How do you know all of this? Like he said, his friend has a history with this drug. Right. This is the place. You think he's here? I do. It's the most popular choice for most users. Mary, please, stay out here. Surely the best place for me to be is with my husband, John. <sighs> Very well. You are our assistant. We entered the den together. The stench of the drug entered our nostrils almost immediately. Both women were worried and afraid. I feared I should not be able to protect them both, but we had to move forward. After searching for what felt like an hour, I decided to look to one man who would be stalking the building. He was a user and evidently high, but I took the chance with my revolver at the ready. Hello sir, do you understand me? Oh, I was wondering when you would get here. Right sir, could you... Please tell me if there is a man by the name of Daryl, please. It's me. Don't you recognize me? I'm sorry, but I don't know who you are. Oh, for goodness sake. Watson, it is I, Sherlock Holmes. Holmes? This is too far. Who is this? This is my friend. What? Holmes, what are you doing here? Did I not mention I was looking into the opium industry? No, you did not. I believe Moriarty may have connections to the opium industry. What? I believe he's one of the main distributors. Gentlemen, we are looking for Daryl. Right, yes. Holmes, we are here looking for this woman's husband, Daryl. Ah, yes. Follow me. Obviously, it was my mistake that this man was high. He was, in fact, Sherlock Holmes in disguise. He led us to Daryl, and Sherry and Daryl were reunited. We escorted them both out of the drug den and back to their home. I prescribed Daryl some medication and sent him to bed. I would go on to check him weekly until he was able to overcome his addiction. However, my questions with Holmes were not yet done. I went straight to Baker Street with him after leaving Mary at home. Ah, oh, perfect as ever, Mrs. Hudson. Holmes, you will answer me now. Why were you in that drug den? In such a 
ludicrous disguise. It proved not so ludicrous, as you were indeed fooled. Holmes! John Watson, please do not shout in my house. Sherlock has been trying very hard recently. Something has frazzled him and he wants to solve this before anyone comes to harm. Thank you again, Mrs. Hudson. However, I think Watson understands this. He is confused and this comes out as anger. Please do not psychoanalyze me, Sherlock. Now, what are you investigating? Information on a case. Really? Yes, really. Well, what case? Neville Sinclair. He is a prosperous, respectable and punctual man. His family's home is in the country, but he visits London every day on business. However, one day, during one of those regular London visits, his wife also visited London and she happened to pass down the very same street that the opium den was on. Are you saying he had an addiction, Holmes? Not at all, Watson. She glanced up and locked eyes with her very own husband on the second floor window. She blinked and double taked, and he had vanished from the window entirely. When she tried to enter, she found herself blocked by a drug dealer, Alaska no less. She got the police's attention and brought them to the house, and they did not find Mr. St. Clair in the house at all. At all? He had indeed vanished. He had. The room that she had seen her husband from was the lair of a disfigured beggar known to the police as Hugh Boone. Now, the police were about to close this case as a case of mistaken identity. But then, Mrs. St. Clair found a small box of wooden toy bricks that belonged to her son. Mr. St. Clair would use these bricks to play with his son. A search of the area was taken, and his coat was found nearby along the bank of the River Thames, filled with hundreds of pennies. With no other leads to go on, Hugh Boone was arrested at once. He did, and still does, refuse to speak. He denies all knowledge of Mr. St. Clair, and is so resistant to the police that he refuses a bath. What do you think happened? All of the information points to murder, Watson, but I wanted to investigate the den freely, so I went in disguise. And got high? Well, I had to blend in, Watson. <sighs> we'll agree to disagree on that, Sherlock. Did you find anything then? Not much, yet. My deductions are still not certain. But I do feel it would be beneficial to speak to Mrs. St. Clair. Very well. When shall we go? It is good that you wish to be involved, my friend. Well, I meant to be taking Mary to a show later. So we will see what I can do in that time. How far are we travelling? Hertfordshire. Holmes! I, I'm sure you can book another night. I can't, Holmes. I really can't. Then we must be swift. How sure are we that Miss Sinclair will give us something we can use? Time will tell, Watson. The answers usually tend to reveal themselves to me when the time is right. Holmes and I made our way from Hertfordshire to London. It was only an hour by train, but still a fair distance. Whilst I had not worked on a case with Sherlock since what happened with Arthur Morstan, Mary was still recovering from that faithful night. I had to make sure I was home in good time. I was weeks away from fatherhood. I had a responsibility. We arrived at the home of the St. Clairs. Holmes's mission was clear. He needed answers, and this may be the only place to find them. Hello, detectives. How may I help you? Hello, Mrs. St. Clair. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is my associate, Dr. John Watson. Yes, I have heard of you. I assume that my husband's case has brought you here. That is correct. I understand it is a difficult subject for you to discuss. I am an independent investigator and I wish to help. You don't think he's dead? Not yet. However, I am yet to make a deduction on that part. I was hoping something here at your home would give me some answers. Well, I hope he is alive. The police have made their decision. Miss Singer, now is not the time to give up Miss Sinclair. Is there anything at all that would be great use to us? I did have something. A letter? I'd received it a few days after his disappearance. It was very strange. If I may ask, why did you go down to London yourself? I had a feeling that something was wrong with my husband. He had been very quiet in the week leading up to this particular visit, and he seemed ashamed. So you followed him to find out the truth? I wanted to see what had caused him so much distress. And you knew where he went? He had mentioned it. Someone managed to point me in the right direction. And then you saw him? 
Yes. I thought he was an honest man. Looks can be deceiving, Mrs. St. Clair. Now, the letter. Holmes and I were surprised. Miss Sinclair explained that the handwriting within the confines of the letter were indeed her husband's. This case was indeed to be a strange one. I glanced at Sherlock. His facial expressions had changed. It was as if he entirely reconsidered this case in his mind. He thought on this for a while, then spoke. I believe I may have a lead on your husband. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, Watson and I must be going. What? Holmes, surely Miss St. Clair deserves an explanation? I cannot confirm nor deny anything yet, but I know now that I have a plan of action. I thanked Miss St. Clair and didn't dare her to stay a moment longer. Holmes and I returned to the train and I got a train straight back to London. On the train, Holmes and I sat across from one another. What struck me was a small grin on his face, as if he figured out the whole case in his head. I questioned him, and only one sentence was spoken to me. All will be revealed in good time, Watson. That was an unsettling moment. We went our separate ways. I went home to Mary for a night out, and Holmes said he was going home to think. Good morning, Watson. I trust you had a good evening with Mary. I did, Holmes. Thank you. Lestrade will meet with us shortly. Any minute, in fact. I see. Well, I must ask how you think the opium industry relates to Moriarty. It's been almost a year, and I've heard nothing. In truth, I've kept it from you, Watson. Yourself and Mary are about to have twins. Getting you involved would be too dangerous. I can look after myself, Sherlock. I plan on shutting down Moriarty's link to the opium industry. And what will that achieve? Ah, oh, Holmes and Watson. It's been a while since I've seen you both. Indeed. What brings you here? I understand you're currently holding a man named Hugh Boone in custody. Neville St. Clair? That's the one. Would we be able to speak with him? Well, we can give it a go, but I'm not sure what we can get out of it. We've tried everything. Not quite, Lestrade. Uh, do your men have a washroom? Of course we do, but he's refused to be washed. Then we will need to figure something out. Such as? Why don't we check the cell? It's early enough. He may be sleeping. Very true, Watson. Both of you with me, and bring sponges. Well, let's see if you are correct, Watson. He is. Mr. Boone is still sleeping. Now, whatever you plan on doing, do it quickly. We must concentrate our sponges on his face. His face? What are you... You were him, Lestrade. Now! What are you doing? Stay still, Mr. Boone. Stop That's enough. Wait, he looks like... I think it is. Holmes, explain. Say hello to Neville St. Clair. I said I did not want to be washed. Your wife has been very worried about you, Mr. St. Clair. Holmes, explain how this has happened. It is obvious that Mr. St. Clair has been leading a double life, Inspector. One is a respectable businessman, and another is a beggar. I had these suspicions after I acquired further insight into Mr. St. Clair himself. Was that at the St. Clair's house, Holmes? It was not, Watson. When we retired for the night, I decided to research into the St. Clair estate. I discovered that in his youth, Neville had been an actor before becoming a newspaper reporter. In order to research an article he was doing on the homeless community, he disguised himself as a beggar. Whilst this was for a short time, he was able to collect a surprising amount of money due to the skill set he had, acting. His ability enabled him to emulate a more sympathetic character with makeup as well as provide a repertoire of witty dialogue on which to entertain the public and persuade them to part with their money. So a performance artist? For lack of a better word. Why would he do this? He already has stable income. This is where things become clearer. 
Upon deeper research, I discovered that Mr. St. Clair had accumulated many debts. His newspaper salary was tiny, but with his skill set as a beggar, he found himself with larger returns. So he became a professional beggar? Indeed, the taking would have been large enough that he was able to establish himself as a country gentleman, marry well, and begin a respectable family. However, this secret was his own. He would rather go to prison or the gallows than risk exposure. Please, you can't tell anyone about this, especially my family. If they found out, I, I, I couldn't face them. Watson, Inspector, may us three speak for a moment in private? Mr. St. Clair, remain here. Very well. What do you propose, Mr. Holmes? It appears there is no reason to keep this man here. What? No crime has been committed, Lestrade. There is no need to keep him detained. Well, he's wasted hours of police workforce, eh? I think what Holmes is trying to say, Inspector, is that you arrested Hugh Bone, not Mr. Sinclair. Precisely, Watson. Then what do I say to everyone else? You may say that you located Mr. St. Clair with the help of myself and Watson, and we returned him to his home, and that Hugh Boone is free to go. I... 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 Sometimes, Lestrade, it is best to follow what Sherlock says, even if it seems illogical. (sighs) Very well. Mr. St. Clair? Yes, Inspector? You are free to go. Really? Yes, now be quick about it. I suggest you dirty your face up again if you wish to remain anonymous. Yes, of of course. I would suggest speaking to your family about this, Mr. St. Clair, in case any situation arises, of course. However, there can be no more Hugh Boone. But what about my- The lie has gone too far, I'm afraid. Hugh Boone will now be on police record. You must do your best to return to your proper occupation With your skills, I know that shouldn't be too difficult. But my family... It is best to be honest with them. It may be the only way you can truly move on. Do you understand? There can be no more Hugh Boone. Yes, I... I understand. May I ask, Mr. Sinclair, why were you hiding in that drug den? It was a quiet place to hide and count what I had collected. The owner did not seem too bothered, so I slipped him a few pounds. Did you get a name for this man? Only some initials, I'm afraid. J.M. Interesting. Thank you, Mr. St. Clair. Good luck. Holmes was silent for the rest of the time we were at Scotland Yard. We returned to Baker Street, where Holmes finally spoke and offered me a brandy. Like old times. I couldn't say no. Holmes, you haven't spoken in some time. Apologies, Watson. Um, how, how, how was the play with Mary last night? Well, it was a lovely night, Holmes. But you know what I'm really asking about. Moriarty. The initials he gave. J.M. James Moriarty, yes. I said he was involved. Have you spoken with Lestrade? I will send a telegram this afternoon, Watson. What's your plan, Sherlock? My plan? Once you get to the bottom of this Moriarty business. My dear Watson, I intend to stop him. But... but what do you think he's capable of? Too much. He was involved with your father-in-law, and now he's running opium dens throughout London. He is planning something on his own. Like what? Chaos. Everything he does is to create chaos. You and I, Watson, we will bring balance. Are you not afraid of what Moriarty will do in return? No. Like me, he is a man of war. Strategy is his game, as it is mine. We are two chess players, and one by one, I will topple his chess pieces. Well, you seem filled with metaphors today, Sherlock. These are dark times, Watson. Now, I apologise, I must leave you. It is time I went to visit Mycroft. Mycroft? As in, your brother? That is correct. I thought you hated him. Needs must when the devil drives, Watson. 
Holmes grabbed his coat and rushed out of Baker Street. The Moriarty case was bothering Holmes, more than any other case we'd ever worked together before. His mood was changed. It seemed like he was searching, preparing for something. War. <laughs>